But Nolan. Corey, congrats on the win. Uh, was that the first impression that you were trying to make in your Bellator debut? 100%. Exactly. We stay at ground and pound. That's what I do. I don't have to go out there and be fans. I don't have to impress anybody. Go out there and do what I do, get the win, get my two checks, go home. And uh, in the opening round, you, you did enter some exchanges with him. So was that something kind of you were trying to prove too? Is like, hey, sure, this guy has knockout power, but so do I. I mean, it wasn't about catching the exchanges. You know, I set my shots up with my hands. They throw the hands, they make it go on box. Like, okay, he's going to strike. When he commits, then I go for my shot. When he sprawls, I come back up with my hands. Is that's a mixed martial artist. You mix it up. And once uh, that sequence went down in round one where you, you almost kind of finished him, uh, did you know, like, round two, hey, if I get this down, the same thing's going to happen and it's 100%, over? 100%. Yeah. We knew it. Like, my manager called me. Oh, I told me when he got the fight. He got, I never knew who Melvin was when they called me. He said he got one good round. He's going to come out hard. You put him down like you do everybody else, he's done. And I did exactly that. And you had told me before the fight that there's kind of levels to this and that you felt – uh, you know, there, there were better fighters and better matchups for you in Bellator than, than Melvin. Um, did, you, did you feel that difference when you were in there too? Yes. I mean, he's a, he's a striker. He's a kickboxer. You know, this is MMA. Like, we knew for sure he's dangerous with striking and kicks. We knew that. But we knew he wasn't going to be as much of a match on jiu-jitsu when he's wrestling. You know, when there's guys in this division that are good at striking, good at kicks, good at wrestling, good at jiu-jitsu, good at judo, good at all kinds of stuff. You know, I want to test my mixed martial arts ability against other top mixed martial artists. Did this win mean anything more to you after all the health stuff that you went through this year since your last fight? I'm still here and I'm kicking, baby. I love it. And what do you think's next for you? I mean, uh, this, this win's still fresh. Are you trying to get in another fight? Uh, it looks like they're booked, you know, the main events are booked. You would probably be a main event. Do you think early next year would be the, the time for you? Yeah, that's fine. So hunting season's over with. Let me get back to my tree stand. Got some deer to slay, baby. February 15th, the last day of Jersey season. Call me all you want after that. But the red is hot, and I'm ready to go get me some. Is there anybody that is in your mind that you're like, hey, this is, this is the fight I want next? Bill Davis and Nemkoff, the two fighting for the belt. That's why I see they fighting. I want the winner. There's no reason why I shouldn't get it. Bader's going to heavyweight to defend his belt. So if he was saying it's 205, I would fight him. But he's gone. The older just lost, so why would I fight a loser? I want somebody winning. And uh, it seems sure. like, like you said, Nemkov and Davis will probably be the fight. Uh, if those two fight, who, who do you think wins that one? Well, we already seen them call beat him once, so I think he just got better. He's going to do the same thing. So, technically, I want them call. But if Phil wins, I want Phil. You know, I want the belt. I want that belt on my wall. I've been dreaming about it. I want a belt over my TV. When I wake up in the morning, every day I see it. I did that. That's what I need. And uh, last one for me. This is your first Bellator experience. Um, now that you've gone through your first fight week, safe to say that you think you made the right choice? I knew I made the right choice when I signed the paper. You know, like I said in the other... Another other interviews, it's just hard for me to get that, that fixation I had engraved in my head, the three letters, UFC, UFC, those three letters engraved in my head. So the fact I signed that contract and I went somewhere else, it was hard for me to erase that off the wall because I've been there for seven years. But I knew right now, I told my wife, I told everybody, it makes no sense. This is the way better deal. This is, no, this is a no-brainer. Like, there's no reason why we should even think about this. But every time I go to sleep, I'll close my eyes and for seven years, you think about one thing. After a couple of good sleeps, it was gone. <laughs> the numbers started popping up like, oh, wait. What, what, what three numbers? I'm looking at six numbers now. So <laughs> that's what made more sense to me. And now here we are, and I'm happy to be here. Great. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, our next question comes from the line of Jay Anderson. Go ahead, Jay. Hey, Corey, congrats on the win. Just uh, two for me. First of all, uh, was the win tonight, you just kind of touched on it, but was it cathartic in any way, just in the sense of closing the door on that old chapter and starting fresh here? The biggest thing for me, like I talked to my wife today, and everybody keep asking interviews, you got any pressure? I feel like there's pressure because you're coming from UFC to Bellator. You got pressure because you rank number five in the world going against somebody that's not. Like I told my wife, I didn't feel any pressure there. The only pressure was on myself was coming after getting knocked out in the main event, you know? Knowing I had another main event coming up. I told Nick Atone this week, I have to win the main event. I've had two main events. I got knocked out in the first round of both. I have to make that wrong right. So the biggest thing for me was knowing that I can – Performing in the main event, they don't let that pressure get to me. And I can perform the way I need to, and I'm still here. You know, I'm not done. I'm ready to keep going. I've still got the passion, my heart, my drive. The fire is hot. And it's going at full burst, baby. I'm just ready to keep going to the top. Was it bittersweet not to have the fans here tonight for your big performance? I think I loved, I loved it. To me, like I said, just like being in the spawn. Like my coach says, just like the gym, everything they said, I can hear him. If you guys heard me, I think it was second or in the first or beginning of the second when I took him down, I could hear my coach saying, but I couldn't make out what they're saying. And that's how I do in Sparta. I tell coach, I do this. and say, I can't hear you, coach. That means speak loud. And the fact that I can do that, he heard me and he spoke loud and I heard him loud and clear. I love it because when you got crowds, it's hard to, 
speculate what he's saying. Sometimes they're saying stuff and it come out like a muffle, like playing a game telephone. You tell one person, next person, by the time it gets to you, it's completely different. Sometimes that's what it sounds like when you got all the crowd screaming and your coach is calling. You mix up the words and do the wrong thing and it can cost you. Sean, go ahead. Corey, congratulations on the big win. Earlier you just mentioned uh, two checks. What were you referring to? Uh, my show money and my win money. There's two okay. checks when you fight. You lose, you get one. You only get half. <laughs> Chop me off at the waist. You go home sad face. Don't put that emoji on me. Give me a big old smile, baby, because I'm laughing and happy. And also talk about, you know, UFC. They were asking you about social media presence and all these extras. Are you just happy to go to a promotion that is going to treat you right? And, you know, all, we can take care of that stuff later, but they'll actually put you on the right platform, on the right, you know, track to become a world champion. 100%. You know, when I got in the sport, uh, one of the first people I've met and knew was Matt Hughes. You know, when he talked to us, he used to come to our team. Lincoln Cosby wearing the hat now. Links for life. He used to come to us all the time. Wrestling is just like fighting. You go in there, you beat the guy in front of you, you get their spot. You move forward. That's why we got wrestle loss. That's why you compete one-on-one -on -one to prove who's the best. But as for when I was over there, I was beating the best, and they kept putting me way down at the bottom. I beat number three and number four. And they ranked me 10 and 9. It made no sense. And then I talked to them. They said, well, your social media, the needle doesn't move. That doesn't make sense. As I come here, there's no rankings. As you perform, you move up. You beat that person, you get their spot. You go out there and show your worth, we're going to give you your worth. And that's why I'm happy to be here. I don't have to worry about the politics. I don't have to worry about, well, I'll beat him. Yeah, well, this guy has a lot of fans, so we're going to give him a title fight. You don't have to worry about that. It's about... Who makes sense? Who earned it? Who be who? You're going to get your chance. Go prove it. You lose. Go to the back of the bus and start over. If you win, you keep going forward. Santiago. Hi, Corey. Greetings from Amsterdam and congratulations on a beautiful performance. I saw a lot of, I saw a lot of respect between you and Melvin after the fight. Do you appreciate it that a combat sports legend like Melvin Manu wanted to fight you in your own country? 100%. You know, I mean, this is mixed martial arts. You know, any martial arts, it's all about respect, sportsmanship, shake hands, congratulate, win or lose, good game, good game. Thank you for competing, good game. And the same thing with MMA. We might have, you might have beef, you might have fuse. When it's all over, it's all respect. You share that cage with another man or woman, if it's two women, and you have a mutual respect. The best man doesn't always win, but the one who got his hand raised, you congratulate him and you move on. And the fact that Melvin has the history he has in combat sports, and I was going out there and do that performance against somebody like that, where people are going to look at him because it's Melvin Manhu. He's a legend. And I went out there and did that. So that, I pay him respect for that. And at the same time, that respect comes back to me from his fans and the people that follow him. So it's just, it's a give and take game. You give respect, you get respect. Enjoy the victory, sir. Thank you. Jenna, <laughs> go ahead. Hi, Corey. Congratulations on a great performance. Uh, I do want to bring the mood down a little bit, though. Melvin is, of course, a legend. He's, of course, uh, someone who's who's been in there with some great fighters. But he, I mean, his last fight, Yannick Bahati, a year ago, over a year ago, I mean, he's not fighting guys like you. He's not fighting guys at the top of the division. When you look at this fight back in a couple of days, are you going to feel in any way kind of guilty about uh, having to go in there and, and do what you just did to him? No, he's a grown man. He signed a contract just like I did. He knew what he was stepping into. So then I told my father, I know the risk every time I step in the cage. That's what we signed up for. That's what he did. Like they say, he's going to die on his shield or go, go eh, either go in or out. What you know what I'm saying? Live by the sword, die by the sword. And he came in on his shield, but he's going out on it. You know? Do you think Vadim Nemkov has ever fought anyone like you before? No, I know he hasn't. You know, he fought Liam McGee, who has good striking. He fought Phil Davis, but Phil Davis wrestling is a little different for me. You know, if, if you follow Phil Davis with his wrestling career, he was more of a top game guy. You know, he beat guys, put his legs, he was long. He used his length to score back points and stuff like that. But his takedowns were never really that sufficient. As for a guy like me, anybody I fight, anybody I train with, they're going to tell you these takedowns are coming. And, and when I believe I'm on the best day, I'm going to get you down. If I touch your legs, you're going. And I know I can get to his legs. I know I can get him down. And then once I get him down, the rest is history. We'll take one or two more. Simon. Hey, Corey, congrats on the win. I see we stuck with the beard for this uh, debut here. But uh, what I really want to talk about here is uh, the relationship with your coach, uh, Coach Mark Henry. So talk to me a little bit how special that is for you. I mean, that's one of the most special things you can have in martial arts that I have. You know, to have somebody like Mark Henry starting the ultimate fighter. Literally, you asked any of the commission and stuff that was back there. Never met him before in my life. They just put us in the locker room. It was 
16 guys and three coaches. And I was the last guy to fight. And I remember telling him, like, coach, I need to warm up. I like going hard. I need somebody to warm up with me early. And he came to me. He gave me, like, a whole game plan. It's like, I don't know if you know any of this stuff, but I want you to try this, try this, and try that. And everything he called, I did. And the coach, even the commission, everybody was like, man, you don't even know this kid. And this kid listens so well. And from that day, me and Mark Henry have been like this. You know, after the awesome fighter, he hit me up when I got off the plane. Like, man, I love working with you. I only had three fights. He said, you've grown so much in that six weeks. If you come to Jersey, if you want to come to Jersey and finish the camp here, man, we can make strides. And I went there and I never left. And me and Mark, we go, we do mitts, then we go to the movies. We invite him to the house. We watch football, come over on Sunday dinner. I was 16 hours away from home, but every weekend he would call me to make sure I wasn't alone on the weekend. Let me come over to his house, hang out with his family, go to dinners with his in-laws and stuff like that. So it's more than a coach-athlete relationship. It's like family. On the holidays, the whole team gets together at Mark Henry's house. He has a pizzeria. We all go to the pizzeria. We make pizzas. We do barbecues and stuff like that. So when I get in the cage and have Mark in my corner, that's big for me. It's like performing in front of my father in a way because when he's done for me in this sport, I wouldn't be here without him. Last question, Keith. All right. It's, it's Keith Joe from Sure Dog. Uh, Corey, first of all, congratulations. Vicky, you looked incredible tonight. Thank you. Uh, I just said last question. I'm going to try to squeeze in two quick ones, I promise. Uh, Corey, are you surprised that you got matched up against Melvin based on how highly ranked you are and that you didn't get an immediate title shot? I mean, like I said, when I came, I didn't expect to get an immediate title shot because I lost my last fight. How can I get knocked out in the main event and then come in and say, well, I want a title shot. I deserve it. I'm ranked top in the world. That makes no sense. You lost. I'm, if I went out there with that, that's being a sore loser. I lost. I got to earn my way back. And that was fine. I told my manager, like, if I get tired of fight next, or I get whatever fight, we're getting paid our worth, so we can't complain. Give me a contract, whoever it is, let's do it. And this is who came across the table, and I signed. Fair enough. I promise. Last question. Uh, you said you want to take on the, the winner of uh, Nemkov and Davis. Are you willing just to sit out, or will you, are you willing to take another fight if they offer it to you? I mean, We'll see what happens. I talk to my manager before I make any calls, any decisions. Talk to my team. But like I said, it's hunting season. And uh, I'm a big hunter. I got an outdoors hunting show. And I need to be in the woods to make that money as well. So season's over in February. If they can wait till then, then that's fine. If not, I got to do what I got to do to support for my family. Thanks, Corey. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for